According to some statistics in 2010, one in 68 children at the age of 8 were diagnosed with autism, with one in every 100 people in the UK having autism. That results in approximately 700,000 people in the UK with autism. But what is it actually like to live with autism? So that's why I'm here. My name is Lewis Gilbert, I'm 18 years of age and I've been diagnosed with autism for the last 15 years. I'm here to take you on an 18-year-long journey to explore how autism has affected and changed my life. It's also given me a chance to see whether I'm still autistic after 15 years of being diagnosed with it. But before we get started, I'm sure some of you will be curious as to what autism exactly is. Well, in order to explain it, I'm meeting with a teacher at a local special needs school who works close with autistic children. So autism is when I think of it as the brain being wired up differently. So um, people with autism are excellent at some things. They have a brilliant memory, usually. Um, they're very visual learners, can learn new skills with uh, visual aids, symbols, pictures, instructions very quickly. Um, and also, um, people with autism are very, usually very passionate about something. They have special interests which they can be very knowledgeable in. Um, um, that could be history, it could be music, they can be very talented. Thursday the 10th of April 1997. As I was brought into this world, I seemed like any other child. However, there were aspects of my behaviour which raised suspicion. According to some statistics, symptoms for autism include little to no eye contact or speech, as well as difficulty with understanding facial expressions and body language. My parents, as well as the staff at my nursery, noticed this to be reoccurring with me, and at the age of three, they sent me to get tested. A few days later, my parents were given the news. I've been diagnosed with autism. However, this did raise a few concerns for my parents. Good afternoon, Dad. Good afternoon. Morning, Mum. Morning, Liz. How did you react to when you got given my diagnosis? Well, that's a tricky question. Um, I think that, that it was it's a very strange situation because as any parent of any child that's diagnosed with anything or breaks their arm or hurts themselves or in any way, shape or form there's something wrong with them, as a parent you are um, naturally worried, concerned, petrified, all of the above. I think what my main concern was, not at the time that you were diagnosed with autism, mm -hmm. it was how you were going to cope with life yeah. as you went on, yeah. not as you got older, where you going to pass your exams. Mm -hmm. Were you going to go to university? Would you get married? Mm. Would you have friends? Would yeah. you have girlfriends? Yeah. Normal things that you think of with any child, yeah. but this was a wee bit more concerning for me. Okay. Obviously I was completely unaware of what was happening and I wouldn't be told for another seven years of my life. But looking back on what has happened, I'm surprised I was heading into primary school at this time and completely unaware of something that separated me from everyone else. 
I had concerns about you going to primary school, there's going to be like 26 other children in your class. How are we going to cope with it? How are you going to cope with it? Mm. Um, all, the, all the noise, yeah. people try to talk to you. And the way we got round about that is we worked well with partly in primary school mm. and um, we set up a book so you could see your teacher, we went and did visits, extra visits. Yeah. So you saw the teacher, you saw the main areas. Yeah. I think that really helped well actually having yeah. photographs of how you were actually going to see yeah. what happens in exactly. your day to day at school. Your mum was in particular talking to the school about, um, you had a statement by that point, mm. so um, they could obviously provide some support, that's when you ran into Mrs Strange, um, pretty much, and so were we worried? Well, no more than any other parent was when mm. their child starts um, school or changes school, but in particular, we were focused on the need to um, get you established as quickly as possible. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Danny. What was your first impression of me back at primary school? You were very, very quiet. You needed a lot of prompting mm. um, to get you through your lessons as a, a, a five-year-old, mm. it had to be focused around trains. Right. Thomas, Thomas the Tank Engine. Oh, yes. Yes? Yeah. Um, that was one way of getting communication with you. Mm. You came across as really icy. I didn't really quite get to know you. You were quite reserved. You kept yourself to yourself. You know, you spoke up when necessary. But um, once we discovered a mutual interest of locomotives and transport, you became a lot more open. You told me things like, you know, how life was going, how your days were going, things you've seen on the weekend. So all in all, you were quiet, but you once you found a common interest with someone, you would automatically become a lot more sociable. You were not very um, commutative with your peers. Yeah. You were more with the adults. Yeah. You were more with adults. Um, people in the school. Mm -hmm. um, however, you you worked hard in school. You did your, you know, the tasks. You didn't sort of kick off or anything like that. Uh, well, we were very good friends when we were young. So obviously, I liked you, Lewis. Um, I didn't actually know anything to do with your autism when we were young. So mm. I didn't look at you differently for that. Uh, you were very lo lonesome, but you know, that was to be expected. Mm. Um, you were, you know, you weren't sociable, but obviously that was to be expected as well. And I think other children accepted you for that. Mm. Right. They never sort of asked, Mrs. Strange, why does Lewis not do this or do that? They never actually asked questions. Yeah. So, mm. but I think as time got through um, school, I think then you became more yeah. sociable. My first impression, just kind of quiet kid, didn't say much, kind of didn't talk much, but yeah, just kind of quiet outsider. Uh, how did you react to learning about the fact that I had autism? I was actually very surprised because I didn't know much about it when we were children and we weren't really taught what autism was or anything. It did not bother me in the slightest, because um, as you know, I was I was diagnosed with having traces of um, AS as well as ADHD, so it was just another friend who was a little bit more like me than I anticipated. I don't think it changed anything. I think it just meant I was more aware that times where with other people you'd just be like, oh, you're so annoying. <laughs> it was more just like, oh, well, you can make a bit of an acceptance yeah. because you know it's not, you know it's not, like, I don't want to say you're full, but it's not mm -hmm. something you can control, yeah, so it's like, well. Definitely. During my time at primary school, all seemed well. I did good in most of my subjects, and in general really enjoyed myself. However, coming up in 2008, was an entirely new hurdle for me to get over. Well, by the time you left junior school, we'd learnt, again, an awful lot more. Mrs Strange had learnt an awful lot more in terms of your, um, your uh, strengths and weaknesses. You had developed, you had academically demonstrated your ability to learn because mm. when you were first diagnosed there was always the question of how much is he going to learn because obviously people who have severe autism um, and there are people who can speak about this much better than I can 
they will um, they struggle to learn. Mm. Um, and again, we were concerned about that. Actually, you know, with your almost identic memory and your ability to never forget anything ever, <laughs> that was even evident back then. Again, I had reservations about going to school. So he thought it was much, much better than partly. Oh yeah. Um, I had a good reputation. Again, we worked well between the primary school mm -hmm. uh, of Park Lane and Little Heath. Mm -hmm. Your support worker at Park Lane came, we did again, we did visits, you got to know the place you, mm -hmm. and did extra lessons during the summer up there just yeah, to see yeah. how it went. Yeah. So I think you did really well with your transitions. I was always a wee bit scared, worried how it's going to go, yeah. but, but then each, time, yeah, each time it worked out as best as it could. Indeed. Was there any worry you had about my future and how I'd cope in Little Eve when we got to that stage? Of course, you always, you know, always worry about somebody. I mean, I've worked with you for quite a while, and I did worry that, you know, sort of like, but I, but I knew that Little Heath was a good school. Mm. I knew that they would give you support. Um, you know, I think your your parents thought that too. Mm. Um, yeah, I did have a little bit of reservation, but that's natural anyway. Yeah. That's natural. Aye. Secretary school is a scary thought for kids in general. Entering an entirely new stage in our lives, getting used to a new school filled with hundreds of students you don't even know, and being autistic was an addition to those worries for me. I still remember walking through those gates for the first time, thinking to myself, where am I? Why is this strange place I'm entering? Will I fit in? Good afternoon, miss. Hello, Lewis. Good afternoon. Hello. Okay, good afternoon. Afternoon. Good morning, sir. Morning, Lewis. Uh, did you know in advance about my autism? Uh, yes, I did. I joined the school in September 2013 um, as a sick form learning mentor and it was Miss Vignali, the head of sick form, who said, I've got an interesting student that I want you to work with. His name is Lewis. Uh, he is autistic. Uh, and that was it. Uh, I hadn't previously worked with autistic students particularly, so I had no preconceived ideas about what to expect, but as I say, I have been warned by Miss Vignali that uh, I would find it an interesting experience, let's put it that way. Um, well, I, I would have known from um, records, so mm. I would have known from some that. However, um, personally teaching you, I don't think that it would have, I don't think that got in the way of any lessons I delivered, mm. any teaching I did okay. for you, or any learning. Uh, I think through through me being a teacher, I could uh, assumed uh, that you had autism, yeah. uh, but also I was obviously aware of, of the needs from being being your head of year to yeah. that you, uh, you knew that. that. I was so we get given all of the SEN information, so I was aware of um, your autism and your needs and your difficulties. Although I find sometimes in drama that it will say something on the SEN and I disagree with it because mm. I've, I find some students are a lot more happier in the drama environment because they can express themselves. Mm. It doesn't always work like that, yeah. but I do find that sometimes it's different to what's on the piece of paper. Yeah. Uh, when you met me, what was your first impression? Right, okay, well I remember our first session fairly clearly, I think it took place in this room, and I remember you talking at length, in great detail, quite loudly, to the extent that at times I could hardly get a word in edgeways, and at the end of the session I felt as if I'd been well, quite bombarded by you. Now I don't know whether that was nerves on your part, because we hadn't met before, because that wasn't necessarily the case throughout the time we spent together that followed, but certainly that was my... Uh, initial impression. Very talkative, very enthusiastic about film and I knew from then I'd be seeing you again in year 12 and 13. Uh, so I must have met you oh, uh, about five years ago now yeah. probably. Yeah, that's correct. Um, and I, uh, a very nice nice young, young man um, uh, but clearly you could be quite nervous in, in certain situations. Yeah definitely. Um, and um, uh, you're quite matter of fact in, in terms of the way you yeah. uh, talk to me and, and, yeah. and things like that from there. Yeah, really. definitely. 
My first impression of you was that you were very different, very different character, in particularly in that group of students, um, a very positive, energetic, enthusiastic person. Yeah. In comparison to how it was in the lesson, was there any contrast between what you expected? You were just as talkative as you were in Year 9, just as enthusiastic about film as you were in Year 9, and no surprises there whatsoever. I knew you were going to be um, an excellent student. Um, students like you, I'm praising you now, are um, wonderful to teach because you are so committed and so enthusiastic and so interested in the subject I spend my life teaching. So okay. no surprises for whatsoever. I suppose when you think of autism you think that someone's going to really struggle with um, communication skills, sometimes confidence and you. I don't think that you had a confidence issue at all so that was different. At first it wasn't so bad. I hung out with a few people I remembered from primary and everything seemed to be going fine. It was also around this time that I joined a local society of model engineers and began to develop my social skills. However, not all was well. It seemed that a group of older students had a grudge against me because they knew my brother and saw me as a potential target for bullying. And even when they stopped, people in my own year group took over. I felt like I was nothing but a joke to them. I used to enjoy being at school because of how much I enjoyed being around my friends. But that all went away during the first three years in secondary school. As my third year came to an end, I was entering a dark time in my life. I felt like life wasn't worth it and began to have thoughts of self-harm and even suicide. I kept these thoughts from my family and avoided being in the kitchen alone. I felt like nobody cared about me anymore and that they wouldn't understand what I was going through. I still remember a day when I was home alone and felt a raging urge to cut myself or slip my wrists. However, as the summer holidays kicked in, I began to realise how wrong I was about the situation. I understood how much the negativity was overwhelming in my view on life. I decided there and then to push all negative thoughts aside and become the person I used to be, a fun-loving and carefree chap. I forgot all about the bullying and belittlement I had gone through for the past three years and began to repair the damage that I had mentally implanted in my mind. By late August, I felt reborn and ready for a fresh start at school. But on Friday the 2nd of September 2011, me and my brother were told that our parents were going to separate. This news will have a profound impact on our lives. Forever. We haven't really had massive numbers of negative days. Um, we've had, you know, the odd issue about sort of exam results and blah blah blah, blah and, you know, disappointments. But we haven't really had negative days necessarily. Um, that, I think, was, well, it was the biggest negative day in my lifetime, um, in almost all 40 years of it. Um, and I know I agonised about what to say, um, when to do it, how to do it. Um, and I know your mum did as well. And, and you know, it, without going into the details of it, it is something that we both deeply regret having to happen. But ultimately, I think the three or four years since have proven it was the right thing to do. However, that's with hindsight. At the time, um, I think we just decided that at the end of the day, we're just going to sit you two down and tell you. I think when we announced that we were going to separate, um, I thought you'd maybe take it quite hard, actually. But you seemed to take it like just matter of fact. You know, it was just another could have been anything. Yeah. Where the other side, Coral took it worse than you, yeah. and I think that's the diff that shows you that you have autism. So you take things, you think, oh well, that'll be fine. We'll just All carry right. on with it. 
Well, then that is quite ironic considering one of the traits of autistic people is that they're not too fond of change. Mm. And the fact that that was probably the biggest change I've gone through alongside school relate, non school related, it's quite ironic how the person who doesn't normally take change well takes it quite well. You took it well. Ultimately, you sat there and took it on the chin and didn't react and were actually incredibly grown up and incredibly adult about it. Um, and we thought you were going to be the problem, and you weren't. And I'm not saying your brother was a, a problem. He reacted how I thought you were going to react. Right. Um, he was full of emotion and close to tears. And uh, as you know, obviously he and I didn't speak for uh, about three or four weeks afterwards. <laughs> That night, when I was told that my parents, who I'd always seen as a loving couple, were going to separate, it was horrible. I just about managed to control myself in front of them. But that night, when I was in my room alone, I lay there and cried. I sat there awake all night, with an all new set of questions whizzing round my head. Was it my fault? Had they had enough of me and my brother not getting along? Or is it just me? It didn't stop in school either. I had just started my GCSEs when I heard the news. I felt as if all the work I'd done to bring myself out of the dark times was unravelling. I became the closed off nobody that was always ignored once again. I was filled with rage and felt like the world was fighting against all the work I had done to help myself. I felt like I would never get out of this power of overwhelming anger. However, there was a light at the end of the tunnel. And at the end of that tunnel was drama. How do you feel drama has affected me for the best? I think you have changed so much from first year to second year. I think you you are a lot of, you're a much happier person. I would never have said last year that you weren't happy, but I feel like you feel completely included in yeah. that class. Yeah. And not that you ever felt isolated, oh, yeah. but that you you really are a unit and a team now yeah. and that has just come through time but I really feel like you're part of the team. Oh, confidence. L literally that's the only thing. You know how to deal with people talking to you a certain mm. way, you know how to make people laugh through confident humour and role play like through a joke and things like that and it's just it's helped you be more comfortable in your skin because you've had to perform in front of people and do things in front of people, not as yourself. So I think it's just helped you find that boundary of where to... Right, okay. Yeah. With drama, I was able to release this built-up anger and depression through my performance. And despite not being a perfect actor, I had the determination and willpower to push through each stage and try my hardest to be the best. Nice, yeah. Hands on breasts, ladies. Your own probably come on, grow up. Um, you I'm going to get my coat now, oh my and I don't want to hear a sound from any of you. And I'll be back in five minutes. Additionally, it was around the time of my GCSEs that my love for filmmaking and photography became apparent. Over the next two years, whilst I battled my way through my GCSEs, as well as my new lifestyle at home, drama and filmmaking became an escape route from reality. But there was still a barrier between me and the majority of my classmates. However, as the years passed and I edged closer to my exams, people in my year group finally began to see me as someone they could respect and began to welcome me into their social groups. And despite all odds, I came out of GCSEs with an A star, A, three Bs, five Cs, and a D. I've since gone on to complete A levels. It seems I've managed to overcome nearly every challenge that has crossed my path, as if I never had autism. Yet, when I was diagnosed, my autism was extremely obvious. The changes to me are too extensive to detail. The difference in you now, to you back then, is extraordinary. And I'm not going to pretend to understand how you've done it, and what has changed, and why it's changed. But there are a number of factors, I think, uh, and there are a number of people that need to be recognised for this. Mm -hmm. And I think and I don't mean this in, a, in an odd way, but one of the first people that need to be recognised is your grand in Scotland. 
because not long after you were diagnosed, she had obviously, your mum and her had, had obviously had a conversation over the phone, and she had read an article in a newspaper about fish oil tablets. Now fish oil has, I think, known, been known for some time to help general mental faculties. Right. Um, anybody could take them, and it's meant to improve um, your ability to recognise and think and help yeah. people. But in particular, this article was referring to the fact that it can help people with autism right. to develop their abilities to overcome certain limitations. I've seen a lot of change in you. You've uh, matured into a responsible young adult. Um, again, you take change much better now. Mm. We don't need to prepare you as much as we did when you were, say, like four or five, yeah. or even up to, I would say, the age of ten. Yeah. You know, if we were going places or doing anything, mm. we'd talk to you about it, mm. or explain to you so and so is coming round to visit, mm. you know. Um, so yeah. I think you've actually matured well. You know, you've coped with your autism, you've put good strategies in to cope with yeah. it, um, and I hope. Yeah. It's helped you. Very confident, self-assured. Mm -hmm. um, you're, you know, you you've come through your your sort of defences and everything like that. Um, no, I, I'm very proud of you. Very proud of you, Lewis. Thank you. Obviously, you're not that different, but it's more like you've become a better version of yourself. Yes, I think. You've become a lot more, um, okay. you know, chills. Yeah. You know, you're just more like you're more willing to do things that you yeah. haven't done previously. I don't exactly. Know. Obviously, back in those days, you thought touch and drink was terrible, and now you're bloody guzzling it all down. Um, I'd say you're more confident now than you were at Park Lane, and you're sort of a lot more independent, and you do well at school, obviously. <laughs> um, I think just like I said, confidence and comedy. I think you have found a way to talk to people through a comedic kind of route that you you sit in quite well and you're able to talk about it quite easily and I think it's just communication barriers you've completely broken down. You're, you're, I notice that you just talk to people all the time, like whether you know them or not, rather than back in year 10 you would just talk to people if you definitely knew that they were gonna, how they were going to react. Well, I mean, you've matured, you've grown up, you're now looking very much looking forward to the future. All your conversations you have with me about university, what you want to do in London. Um, obviously you're still wanting to make films and go into sort of yeah. film production. Uh, I think confidence. I think you become far more confident. Um, you, you are able to uh, have more of a conversation like we are now. Yeah. Um, but it's that, that, that you, you seem to have accepted uh, and also, you you don't use autism as an excuse. You just get on with it, and um, and that you are just so much more confident, young a adult now, really, as I see you, uh, that can go out and do things, uh, do things like this, and 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 really sort of see that as a real change in your your persona. I just think confidence. I just think that you are more confident in telling people ideas for performances um, because you now know those people better and you feel like you, you can give them hints and tips which you maybe struggled with a bit at the beginning because you weren't familiar with the people and you didn't yeah. want to upset people. Right, well I, I do think you've grown in confidence, I also think your body language reflects that and you may be interested to know that I think you've also developed as far as the clothes you wear a certain style which has developed over over the, the two years which you may not have expected me to have noticed but teachers do observe things like this so generally I think you've become a more self-confident young man. However, one thing that hasn't gotten ignored within my family is my development as a person. Seems I'm no longer the person I used to be. I no longer fear the sounds of fire alarms or sirens and I can actually go out on a night out with my friends and socialise properly. I think it's about time I sit down and give my view on this. Okay, now time to swap things around. What questions have you got for me? Fire at them. Right, the question I've got for you. In your early days, going back to Nostra, if you can remember that far back. Can Just about. You, can you, do you feel you were any different to any other child at Nostra? 
I didn't see any major difference between me and anyone else. I mean, I admit I was a bit of an odd kid at child, but then, everyone, like I've said previously, everyone's different in their own ways. I think maybe I was, there was just a couple of th more things about me that made me, st made me stand a bit more mm -hmm. than anyone else. What, what, what do you think being autistic is? What is it to you? Oh, crikey. Stop with an easy one, more, don't you? Yeah, I am. <laughs> well, to be honest, I don't see it as something that puts that person apart from anyone else. Mm -hmm. I see it as just something that just adds to that person's individuality. Because one thing I hate is when people say, oh, you're not normal. What is normality? There isn't such a thing. You're right. Everyone is different, and being autistic just adds to that, and it makes that person even more unique. Mm -hmm. I mean, it links them to other people who are autistic. That doesn't mean that they're not unique in their own other ways. Like, you're not, you're probably not going to find another autistic person who's identical to me in every way, shape, and form. Uh, another question I've got is your favourite topic, food. Oh no, <laughs> we've known for years. You know, we're slowly getting there with food. Yeah. What is it? that makes you not want to taste different foods? Is it something in your mind, and your brain? Or is it the texture you're worried about? It's a mixture of things really. Like, um, it depends on the uh, what the food is combined of. Like, maybe it's the smell uh, the smell I get from a food. Maybe that puts me off it. Like, a lot of Indian food and... Not trying to be racist or anything. <laughs> but the smell of it just sort of puts me off it. But also maybe the way it the, maybe the, way, the texture of it in my mouth is maybe just being like, uh, not too sure about that. Right. Or maybe just the actual look of it just puts me off it. Okay. So does colours put you off? Or? Uh, it doesn't have to be colours. It could be, it's just maybe the, out the layout of it or maybe how it's made puts me off it right. visually. What do you think? How do you think you've developed over the years? How do you think you've changed? I don't. I don't even recognise who I am. Who I am anymore from what I was back in when I was three. You know, I got diagnosed. Mm -hmm. If uh, well, if the three-year-old me saw the seventeen-year-old me, mm -hmm. he'd probably think it was a completely different person because there's not a lot of that of that three-year-old me left. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, there's elements. I mean, obviously, I've gained a sense of humour, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> I've gained certain tastes. Even they're not perfect. Yeah, no, none of us are. Uh, I've, I've I managed to lot. Well, I wouldn't say lose, but maybe control a lot of those things that maybe helped me back in those early stages. Like, like you've said in the interview, um, I no longer fear fire alarms. Mm -hmm. I'm able to socialise a bit better than I used to. Mm -hmm. I'm actually accepted a lot more nowadays. I'm not just seen as the weirdo who sits in the corner and is not spoken to. Mm -hmm. People don't see me more as a target for bullying as they used to. I think the last question for you okay. is where do you see yourself in 10 years time? Well, I'm hoping to have got through my degree at university for film production, because obviously, hopefully I'll have gone to one by then. But, to be honest, I'm hoping that I've got myself maybe involved in a film or television company, or maybe even started my own, maybe. So you're talking about your career. Yeah. So if I turn the question and say, um, personally, socially, where do you see yourself in 10 years' time? Well, I'm hoping to be a lot more of a social person, maybe go out a bit more. I mean, that, that's one thing I struggle with still now, is maybe go out to clubs, because that's not sort of my sort of environment in a way. But you have been to clubs. Oh, yeah, I've been occasionally, if just for maybe an occasional night out. But it's just something I wouldn't constantly do. But also, I'm interested to see what happens. I mean... Do you think you'll be married, children? <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Not sure. Just have to see what I, who I come across in the next couple of years. That's true. I think the one question that will help me conclude this is whether people would think I was autistic without knowing anything about me in the present day. No. Yeah. In some parts, you can't tell. It's like having a mental disorder. You cannot tell unless they exhibit some form of physical or verbal behaviour. No, I don't think it's obvious in that sense. I think having a conversation with you, yeah, but not massively anyway. No, I wouldn't, it wouldn't cross my mind. I right. would just um, probably just walk past you. 
Um, just to just to look at you, probably not. Um, but to speak to you, I would get this sense of you being very enthusiastic about no. things. No, no, I wouldn't. Unless I started, you know, obviously when I, you know, no, I wouldn't because you just look like any other boy your age. Yeah. So no. So to sum this up, yes, I am still autistic. I can't believe I thought I could actually stop being autistic. I mean, yes, clearly there have been a few changes to how I respond to things, and other areas where it's nearly impossible to notice. But the one thing that makes it clear that I have autism is how it made me the person I am today. And I'm still that person. I'm still the film producing overacting carefree chap. I'm still me. I'm still Lewis Gilbert. And I'm still autistic. And do you know what? I'm glad I am. For more information on autism and how it affects people like myself, please check out the National Autistic Society on www.autism.org.uk or email them at publications at nas.org.uk. You can also contact the helpline on 0808 800 401.